don't have the Thalastia. We do have better yesterday. Today is an improved version of yesterday. Tomorrow will be better than today. That's the life we have and I want you to believe it. What we are able to establish is for us to praise God no matter the situation. And we also mention that praise is stronger in effect, stronger in producing results compared to prayer. We also said that praise or thanksgiving is a mystery. It is only those who understand this mystery that can maximize it. If you don't know this mystery, what is mystery? Mystery is a secret. What others cannot understand except is revealed to them. It is a secret. Revelation of a secret. Those of us who know the mystery of praise and thanksgiving, we get the benefit thereof. So this is one mystery of the kingdom that you need to maximize, that you need to enjoy. How do you explain going to war? Jehoshaphat part in 2 Chronicles chapter 20. Everybody is going to war and they are planning their weapon. And God told Jehoshaphat, take singers. Let them praise the beauty of my holiness. And as they praise me, he set at bushment in the camp of the wicked. They saw them carrying tambourine and carrying drums and shekere. And the other guys were carrying weapons. But they couldn't do anything. At the end of the day, you know the rest of the story in 2 Chronicles chapter 20. The enemy helped one another to destroy themselves. Because these guys, they, they went with a mystery that the enemy cannot compare, comprehend. Praise is a dangerous mystery. When you are disadvantaged, things are not working. You just suffered a setback, then you burst into praise. The enemy can't understand. The enemy of Jehoshaphat did not understand. Or how do you explain in uh, Joshua chapter 6, going to conquer Jericho, and you go to the edge of Jericho, and God says, hey, 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 don't fight. All I need you to do, this wall of Jericho in seven days, go around. The first six days, just once, just keep going. Just keep going. Just keep going. Then on the seventh day, go seven times. And he said, watch what I will do. And on the seventh day, they gave him praise because the Bible says they, he, gave the, he told them to shout. And as they shouted, the obstacle sank. Can I hear a shout in this house this morning? No, give me like that kind of seven day shout, a loud one. Finally, the loudest shout I can sing the one of Jericho. The loudest shout. They shouted, the wall of Jericho sank. And see, I am not telling you fables. Many years ago, maybe the late 90s stroke, early 2000, one of our members in the student fellowship, he had the message like this, talking about giving God praise and anything can sink, wall can sink. This brother went to mobile headquarter and he said the Lord lay upon his heart that the entire mobile headquarter in VI, he should just be going around their wall seven times. Praise God. And they did it. At the end of the day, he ended up working inside that company. I'm sure you remember that testimony. He ended up working in that company. Someone said, okay, tomorrow I will go around. <laughs> As a rock seven times. <laughs> To be, I will be very happy to pray for you as the next president of this country. Can I hear amen from this church? Mysteries work. 
You see the way you laugh now that uh -uh, going around Mobi and you ended up walking there. We saw it live. Oh. He walked there for years that we all witnessed. He said what God lay upon his heart is to go around their wall seven times. This mystery doesn't make sense. To natural men, doesn't make sense. How do you go to war with tambourine when everybody is looking for AK-47? People are looking for machine gun. They are looking for airplane, warplane. They are looking for warship. Then you go there, praise the Lord. For his mercy endured forever. For his mercy endured forever. Then they are saying, what's wrong with you? You know, sometimes when a praise man is doing things, it doesn't make sense. How do you, how dare you carry tambourine? It's like now in Ukraine, when uh, Russia bombarding everywhere, then you carry tambourine out of your house. Praise the Lord. <laughs> then they need to take that man to, for attention. But when you praise him by understanding, can you remember my definition of understanding? It makes you outstanding. What you know determines where you stand. Determines how you behave. There is something Jehoshaphat encountered. God said, praise me. Even when it doesn't make sense. Praise me when you are weak. Praise me when you are pain. Psalm 126 verse 5. Those who sow in tears, they will reap in joy. You are tearing and crying and weeping. He said, but I'll praise you. Even when I don't feel like, I will praise you. Even when I'm weak in my body, I'll praise you. Remember back on chapter 3, 17 to 19. He said, even if there will be no fruit in the vine, even if the labor will fail, even if the olive will not bring forth, Habakkuk 3.17, the fig tree will not blossom, the fruit of the vine, uh, there will be no fruit in the vine, the labor of the olive shall fail, the, and the field will yield no meat. We yield no meat, and the flock shall be cut off from the fold, and there shall be no help in the storm. Everything about this 70 is negative. What did the man say in verse 18? Yet, despite this negativity, I will praise you. Yet, I will rejoice. And I will joy in the God of my salvation. And as I begin to rejoice, verse 19, then you will make my feet like iron's feet. Then you will make me to stand upon my high places. You want to stand in high places in life? Give him praise. Give him praise despite your pain. Give him praise despite what you're going through. Can I hear amen to that? Amen. And you know, the praise God is asking for this morning is a sacrificial praise. Psalm 116, verse 17. There is a regular praise, Psalm 116, verse 17. And there is a sacrificial praise. There is regular praise and there is a sacrificial praise. He said, I will offer to you the sacrifice of thanksgiving. And I will call upon the name of the Lord. I will offer to you the sacrifice. There is a sacrificial thanksgiving. Where you thank him. Not minding your situation. Not minding your pain. Because somebody you can dance your way out of sorrow. Dance your way out of mockery. Please note something. God thrive. God dwell in the midst of praise. That's what Psalm 22 verse 3 says. He inhabits. Praise is the natural habitat of God. He stays there. When you see more morning and people crying, that's where the devil stays. The devil cannot survive where people are thanking God. Neither can God survive when people are murmuring. So every time you say, mm, I don't know why things are like this. I don't know why this economy is like this. I don't know why my bank account is like this. I don't know why my job is like this. I don't know why I'm like still single. I don't know why I'm not married. I don't know why I don't have children. I don't know why. God can't stay there. God only stays when people say, despite what I'm going through, I will praise you, oh my Savior. I will praise you, 
Oh, my Savior, I will praise you. Sing it with your mouth. Shout it now. I will praise you. For how long? Sing it in your native language. Come on. Do we have only Yoruba in this church? Your native language. Ah, Even when I can't see you, you are walking. You never stop walking. The devil will tell you, why are you single? Why are you singing? Why are you joining them to sing? The same reason why I should not sing is the same reason why I will sing. I will praise you forevermore. I don't feel like, but I just have to praise you. Oh, Shatanabayakanda. Thank you, Jesus. That scripture we read, it talk about the sacrifice of thanksgiving. It's painful, but we have to do it. It's painful, but we have to rejoice. We have to thank him and bless him and honor him. In everything, the Bible says, give thanks. Jesus could not perform miracle at the tomb of Lazarus. They said this man has been dead for four days. If you check uh, John 11 from verse 41, the first thing Jesus said is, Father, I thank you because you hear me. You always hear me. He lifted up his voice and said, I thank you because you have heard me. Thanksgiving. Then the next thing is to command Lazarus to come out. Many are commanding without thanking God. I want a car. I want a house. Have you used, used the password? Uh, it takes those who are inside to command the things inside. You are not inside. You are commanding car, commanding house. Where you don't even have access. And we have just learned this morning that what is the, what is the password? Thank you, Jesus. Can you use it one more time? Thank you, Jesus. So no matter what you're going through in your pain, in the situation of life, give him thanks. I, I, I heard the story of a woman, there was no food. Going to bed, it was, she was so pain. But this woman, children, no food, maybe a single mother or something. And the woman brought water. She has been taught faith. She has been taught thanksgiving. She brought water to the center table and told the children, let us all dance and celebrate God because food is here. And they began to praise him and began to praise him. And they keep dancing around water. And after praising God, you know sometimes people think God is a magical God. After praise, he just thinks that one man will just pack and say, yeah, worry. Bah. There was nothing. And the woman says, okay, everybody, where is your cup? Take, take dinner and go to bed. They drank water. But early in the morning, somebody knocking at their door. I'm sure the Holy Ghost will not allow that person to sleep. He brought full stop with chicken. Early in the morning. How do you get chicken overnight? Brought full stop with chicken. The Spirit of God said, I should come and give it to you. What happened? When they were praising last night, God has already started working. So when we praise him this, this morning in this place, please do it with all your mind. Even when you don't feel like God is working behind the scene, something is happening. Can I hear amen? This morning, I joined the first service in Canaan land. Um, online on my way to church and I had Papa shared a testimony. Somebody came to church for the first time. They went all out as winners to go and invite people last Sunday and this man came to church for the first time. On his way home on his way home somebody, somebody say the angel of the Lord. 
parked behind the man and on. I said, please come. And the man went. He said, do you know how to drive? The man said, I don't know how to drive. I've told some of you, go and live ready. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, it's time to go to UK. Do you have a passport? <laughs> <laughs> do you know how to drive they asked the man the man said I don't know how to drive but I cannot drive a car but I can drive tricycle he said okay no problem give me your number he gave the man number the following day the man himself called him and said to him he said go and price tricycle and tell me the amount and they told the man and he said I will pay for it you have the tricycle. Now, I said to myself, when I had that uh, testimony from Bishop, that if the man knew how to drive a car, <laughs> ah, who is saying amen? Your blessing will not be drunkraded. Your blessing will not be drunkraded. Only Marwa no fair Marwa. Okay, go and price Marwa. Take money for Marwa. And in the man's testimony, the man prayed for the tricycle and um, they asked him, do you know the man? He said, after that day, I can't, except I call him on phone, the angel of the Lord. Men like angel who are sent to your life to be of help to you. This week, you will see them. This week, they will show up. So somebody in this service today, praise God. Give him praise like, like no other person is here. Roll before the Lord. I thank you, Lord. You've done me well. You've done so much for me. Do I have somebody like me in the church today? Has God really been very kind to you? So when it's time to pray, you just praise him. You praise him as if you are the only one here. I don't care about what you say about my dancing step. It is, it is, it is my own way of praising my God. Amen? Some people say, I have only one dancing step. But Emilio, yeah. Praise the Lord. Is somebody blessed? What is thanksgiving? Can I give you three definitions of thanksgiving? What is thanksgiving? Number one, thanksgiving is acknowledging God as the one behind every good thing in our lives. Thanksgiving is acknowledging God as the one behind every good thing in our lives. John chapter 3 verse 27. Can a man receive anything except it be given to him from heaven? A man cannot receive anything except heaven release it to him. You must acknowledge God as the one behind every good thing in your life. And you know when you don't acknowledge him, you will lose it. You must acknowledge God. Those of us who are used to Korea business, if um, any of these big Korea company want to deliver valuable, not just letters to you, letter they can put it in box, but if it's something major, something valuable, they need someone to sign for it. And if they get to your address, nobody has told nobody to acknowledge it, they take it back to their office. And they will now leave a message for you to come for it or tell them the time they will meet somebody who can acknowledge it. You know how many blessings everyone has been bringing because you have not been acknowledging the last one. They take it back. They take it back. Because you didn't acknowledge it. And it's going to be a liability if you buy iPhone 13 and ask them to deliver to Mr. A and they deliver to Mr. B. So they need a signature. So be sure that the right person, and if it's not the right person, your prosy received it on your behalf.
So if you are complaining, hey, I have not received my iPhone 13, they will tell you, Mr. Benro, oh, Mr. Benro, my junior brother, he received it on my behalf. And if Benro has misappropriated the iPhone 13, uh, your, name has, your name has entered the DHL register. Then you have to vomit it. But if they have been going there, nobody to acknowledge it. They take it back. Because they don't want any liability. Heaven has been releasing blessing. Many have not been acknowledging. And your acknowledgement is your thank you, Jesus. Lord, I thank you for your blessing. I thank you for your goodness. That's why God called this meeting. Acknowledging God as the one behind every good thing. If it is good, it's from God. James 1, 17. Every good gift is from above. Every good and perfect gift is from above. If it's bad, man is responsible. But if it's good, God is at work. John 14, verse 10. John 14, verse 10. Jesus himself showed us this principle and he told us that the Father in me is the one doing the work. Open acknowledgement of God as the source. And in one of our teachings last month, we understand that the Father he was referring to here is the Holy Spirit. The, I, I have received help. That's why I can open the eyes of the blind. My Father in me doeth the work. Open acknowledgement of the heart of God in Jesus' life. Many cannot, God has done you very well to openly declare your testimony is an issue. To, to come here and say, ah, this is what the Lord has done for me is an issue. And you are wondering, why did the testimony cease? Because you have not acknowledged the last one. When you don't acknowledge it, they don't deliver it. The next blessing, you are not qualified for it. Praise the Lord. Can I hear everyone in this hall shout, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So God is working. He's working in your life. He's doing good things. When you go by construction site, you will see men at work. They will tell you men at work. But look at what Philippians 2.13 says. For it is God which work in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. So if you can carry out anything good, it is God that is at work. So for you today, go and construct something and say God at work. Not men at work. God is the one in me doing everything that you see that is good. For you to raise your hand this morning is God at work. You can blink your eye, it's God at work. You can shake your head, it's God at work. You can raise one foot, it's God at work. You can raise the two foot, it's God at work. God is working in me. You know, I had one testimony from Pastor David Oyedepo, that is the David Oyedepo Jr. Nam. He said he went to UK to hospital to pray for a teenager, 16 years old boy, who was sick. And after praying for the boy, he observed that it's as if the, there is a blood transfusion going on. And, but this is a bit strange because the gadgets were too much. And he saw blood flowing out and flowing into the boy. So he inquired of the mother that what kind of uh, procedure is your son going through and the mother said hey, the problem my boy have is that his blood does not have oxygen the blood cannot accommodate oxygen you see this thing that we breathe in is going into our system but his own once he breathes in it was the, the whole system will be destabilized the, and when they did all the tests, they discovered that his blood is too fragile. It cannot sustain the air necessary for the flow of blood. So what that procedure means is that they drain all the blood in his body and they will now oxygenate the blood. They needed oxygen to do that procedure, then they pass the blood back to his body. And that procedure weekly cost 9,000 pounds. That is in Nigeria Naira, 6.7 million Naira. Every week, 
So I multiply it by 52 weeks in a year. That is 351 million, just one part of your body called your blood to function. So if I need 351 million to make sure that my blood is flowing, what about my kidney? What about my liver? What about my eyes? Uh -huh, I'm not hearing it all. What about your leg? And uh, David Oedepo said there were three of them in that room, himself, another pastor, and the mother of the boy. And he, he said the three of them could bring in oxygen freely, and their own is working. And the boy is in the same room for them. So he said it is, the problem is not with the oxygen. The problem is that these three people, they have received mercy. Anulari bao. You know, because what is the offense of this boy? That his own blood cannot oxygenate. Then they need a machine that will cost 351 million naira annually to maintain. And he said he came to a conclusion that man is too expensive to be maintained by another man. Do you understand what I'm saying? You are too complicated to be left in the hand of the doctor to maintain. You need to go back to the manufacturer of man. If man need 351 million naira to oxygenate his blood, what if there is a problem with his kidney? What if there is a problem with the liver? What if the legs, there is a problem? What if there is a problem with the eyes? Can I hear those who are grateful this morning? Now listen, what you don't acknowledge, you will lose. What you don't acknowledge, you won't receive further help. God has shown you mercy and you have not been saying thank you, you have not been acknowledging him, he stopped. And it's also natural. Somebody bless you today, bless you tomorrow, and every time he bless you, you do like nothing they happen. You know, no thank you, no appreciation, no gratitude. Then the man says, ah, am I okay? No, 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 I can't do that again. And he stopped. Because ingratitude shut the door. Praise the Lord. If you don't acknowledge the heart of God, the flow will stop. Thanksgiving is acknowledging God as the one behind every good thing in our life. Your hand is working. Your kidneys are working. Your liver is working. Your blood is flowing. Then you say that, Pastor, nothing is working. In fact, since this year began, I have not seen anything. Nothing has been working. Your mouth is working. You can raise your hand, you can raise your leg, you can blink, you can shout. Can I hear you shout one more time? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Number two, thanksgiving is ascribing the glory to God for who you are and where you are. Giving glory to God for who you are and where you are. Stop making reference to your education. My strength brought me to where I am. Your strength is you are enjoying his mercy. Remember Paul, 1 Corinthians 15, 10, I am what I am by the grace of God, by the mercy of God. He's not my power, he's not my ability, he's the mercy of God. Acknowledge God for who you are and where you are. Lord, for what you are doing in my life today, I thank you. For where I am today, I thank you. Praise the Lord. Somebody is complaining, I don't have a house of my own. I don't have a car of my own. It's because you are alive. Can the, de the dead complain about car? About house? About marriage? Give him glory. I am what I am. By the grace of God. Jeremiah chapter 13 from verse 16. Jeremiah 13 from, 13 from 16. He said, give God glory before he cause darkness. Before your foot stumble upon the dark mountain. And when you look for light, they turn to shadow of death. Give him glory before he make it gross darkness. 
I'd like you to check your life this morning. If where they used to celebrate you, they now mock you. They don't want you. Check your thanksgiving life. Take, check your gratitude life. The same people who say, hey, we love you, they now drive you out. Something is wrong. Give him glory. Don't ascribe the glory to your ability. Don't say my strength brought me this joy, brought me this uh, job, brought me this glory. No. You can't do anything by your own power. What have you received that you have not received from above? Your ability cannot deliver anything. He said, ah, it is my three days dry fasting. You know people who are doing 21 days dry fasting and no result? Okay, even if it is your fasting, can you answer your prayer? <laughs> you pray and then you answer it. It's not possible. So if God is the one that gives you result based on your prayer, then you must learn how to give him glory. When people try to say, wow, you are so grace, see the hand of God upon you, you must signpost them, say, God, I thank God. Oh, look at where you walk at your age, God. You are so intelligent, God. Can I hear amen? You must give him glory for where you are and who you are. It's not your ability. It's not your education. It's the grace and the mercy of God. And finally, before we burst to praise him this afternoon, what is Thanksgiving number three? Thanksgiving is recounting the heart of God and the goodness of God in our life. Recounting. You count and recount. Thank you, Jesus, for helping me to pass this exam. Thank you, Jesus, for where I am right now. Thank you for my wife. Thank you for my children. Thank you, Lord, for all you have done for me. I do not want to take you for granted. I thank you. Oh, I went out and I came back. You preserve me. Oh, it's your smartness that brought you to where you are. One of our members who, who live in Abuja came two weeks ago and he shared his story, a testimony with some members here. He said that Kaduna train, he, did he say he entered the train or he, the, the train before that one was his own train? It would have happened to him. Is somebody saying thank you, Jesus? Are you aware that that thing has happened now for a month? And now, they, this week, they see paraded people who are in captive. A woman gave birth in that captivity. Eight-month pregnant woman was captured. And they now say, oh, the baby has been delivered. So mother and baby now have been adopted in captivity. Then somebody just go out and come back and say, ah, yeah, I think I'm very smart, you know, you know, I'm just very smart, I'm just very smart, I'm just very smart. I know you are smart, but give God glory to, that is due to his name. The glory that is due to God is poisonous to man. If you try to share his glory, you will crash. Jeremiah, we just read now, he said, give him glory before he cause darkness, before your feet stumble upon the mountain. It's time for this church to count and recount your blessing. You know that song? Count your blessing. Make it louder now. Count your blessing. Now say it now. And it will surprise you. Count it one by one. Even just today, the things God has done for you. If it will take 351 million naira just for blood to flow in your body. Now your own blood has been flowing forever. Your hand has been, I mean, you've been raising your hand forever. Do you know that there are people who wake up and one part of their body, they cannot carry it. 
and they said they had stroke. Their body has been paralyzed. Look at you. Look at what God has done for you. Why not give him praise? Can we read Psalm 103 from verse 1 and we end there? Give God praise for the multitude of his heart, his blessing, his hand so strong upon our lives. Psalm 103 from verse 1. He's been so good to us. Oh, thank you, Jesus. You've done so much for us. We can tell it all. Psalm 103 from verse 1. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and everything that is within me. Bless his holy name. This is how David praised God. That's why this man never lost any battle. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Forget not all his benefits. Count them. Thank you, Jesus, for life. Thank you for strength. Thank you for good people you have surrounded me with. Thank you for your blessing. Thank you for the gift of life. Thank you for the children you have blessed me. Forget not all his blessings. Somebody here, you, your children, you have three girls, and you are saying, I want a boy, I want a boy. Why don't you thank God for girls? The same way I thank God for boys. Thank him. There are people who want a child. Now you have three girls. You are now murmuring. I've told you, no, no murmurer has a future. God will never stay with a murmurer. You are blaming God for giving you a child. A child that can be a president tomorrow. What's the difference between a boy and a girl? Why do you want to kill yourself? If your destiny is girl, stay there. If your destiny is boys, I stay there. Somebody help me. Say thank you, Jesus. I envy no man. I stay on my name. Pra praise God. If God has blessed you with boy, continue that journey. And I have discovered most of the people who mock me that I don't have get. They keep giving back to boys, 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 boys. Some of you are laughing right now. You don't know what is coming. Boys, 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 boys. Why me? I'm thanking God for my own boy. Why don't you thank God for what God has done for you? Can I hear amen to that? Never, never, never trivialize God's blessing. Never. Somebody is crying now. Uh, uh, husband is fighting wife. You are born, you give back to girls, girls, girls. Oh God, you are the one that donated it. You gave the gene of the girls. The woman cannot have the egg on her own. Praise God. Instead of you to say, Father, we thank you for these children. They're going to be great children in life. Can I hear amen this morning? That scripture says, forget not all his benefits. Who forgive it? All oh, iniquity. Do you know how, how some of you, you were bad? Like bad. But God forgive all your iniquity. And what did he do to your body again? He healed all your diseases. Why would you thank him? Verse 4. Verse 4. He said, he redeemed your life from destruction. This one, no doctor can give, do this one for you. And say, okay, yeah, take this medicine. Two morning, two night. No accident. No destruction. Only God. The only God. Only the bam in Gilead. Only the great physician there. He said, who redeemed your life from destruction and crowned you with loving kindness and tender mercy. Count your blessing. And verse 5, I think I want to stop in verse 5. He satisfied your mouth with good things. And your youth is renewed as the eagle. Many of you, you know where, where you were. How you used to eat. Now when your wife serve you, then you say, my God, you satisfy my mouth with good things. Then when you remember Babylon, when you remember yesterday, where I'm coming from, then you have cause to say, Lord, I thank you. I thank you for your hand so strong upon my life. Me, 
That's why Psalm 8 verse 4, he said, what is man that you are mindful of him? That the son of man that you visited him. Me, live in a flat. Me, who am I? If not for your grace, if not for your hand, then God did not stop there. He said, Joseph, I know you're a crazy worshiper. You're a crazy praiser. I will not only give you a flat, I will give you a house. I will give you houses of your own. Somebody right now, you may be struggling. Pain. Praise him in your pain. Be mad in this praise. And the, the next praise in this second service, let it be high praise. Psalm 149 from verse 3. He said, let them praise him with high praise and with two-edged sword in their hand. Now, praise him with a dance. Go to verse 4. Are you ready to praise him now? Yes, that's it. Then we now enter 6. He said, let the same be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud. So this is not quick, quick praise. How should they sing? White kind of praise. Praise that that make your neighbor, sometimes your dance does not fit into the beat. <laughs> it's loud dance. Loud praise. Then verse 6, what will happen? He said, let the high praises of God be in their mouth. And a two-edged sword. In, this is the one that silenced the mockers. When you praise God like this, they are wondering, hey, is this not the man we cage for him never to say thank you, Jesus? Is this not the man we cage never to praise God? Is this not the man who is always saying, this person has moved forward, that person has moved forward? This is the reason God called for this meeting. Maybe somebody here, you always say, I think something is wrong. God is partial. And I think I have preached that in the past, that favor is not fear. God just look at somebody who is coming to church for the first time. That is the person who will receive healing. And those who have been there for years. And he said, why did that happen? Please ask God. Because Joseph cannot heal one person. Who is the healer? Oh. He's the bombing killer. How he distributes it, we don't know. We can be in a service like this and like the testimony we just had. Somebody who went to watch the service after got a testimony. And somebody in service is still saying, when will my own come? Instead of you complaining in all things, give thanks. Thank him. Be wild this afternoon. Oh, you, you have had testimony of new job, of, of businesses, of promotion. It's time for you to rejoice. We have dedicated cars and you are wondering, when will it be my turn? You know, sometimes I see good things and when pictures are post, uh, posted, you will see young people in the church, they will say, God, when? God, when? When will it be? When will it be mine? Praise the Lord. That time, you would want to determine it. You don't need to. God has no business with the timing. All God is asking for is the one I have done right now and yesterday, acknowledge it. If you acknowledge it well, that's why God said, Island Church, I have shown you mercy. I have shown you kindness. I have been so generous to you. Many people started church and church did not grow. They start their church and they, they don't have money for facility. They don't have money for equipment. God has never left us stranded. Can, can I hear a loud thank you, Jesus? Miraculously, God always meet need in Island Church. You can ask Taiwo. He's the man in charge of money. When we need money in this church, God shows up. All we want is make sure you have a vision that is from God. He finance it. He sent good people. It touches the heart of people. And it, we kept making progress. We kept moving forward. Despite the attack of the enemy, this church keep growing in leaps and bounds. Blessing his people. So i like you to check your life. This last point is to recount and count. You name them one by one. Check your life three years ago. Where were you? Check your life five years ago. Where were you? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, give him praise. He's done so much for us. So much. 
See, if I tell you my life history, you will know what they call the mercy of God. The favor of God. And God is not partial. If we all stay on this kingdom principle, we will see the hand of God. Can I hear amen from somebody? This is where we started from. You need to know this, our pastors. They are, they are illiterate praisers. I use the word illiterate. Now they are big men. They, they, do, they, do, they do big men. I know what I'm saying, Larry. I, I know the way you used to praise God. I know the way Pastor Nee used to. They, they, create, they create sin. Uh, the spirit of pastor has come upon them. Holy man of God. Holy man of God. Holy man. But once a while, that spirit, you, you will see it sometimes Pastor Nee manifests when that old spirit, that is the spirit that, that is the spirit that was on him. The spirit of a child who prays God like a veiled person like David in God's presence. And from there, a Meti boy begin to receive promotion, begin to become a chartered accountant, begin to go abroad for masters, begin to do great things in life. Now, when you praise him, God raise you. Please, in this praise, no packaging. Hmm? No packaging. If your powder uh, spoil, you go to the toilet and touch it up after the service. But for this one time, if you're gele loose, why these things happening? Let, I would rather lose gele than to lose my destiny. I need my future intact. This one is wide praise. It's not organized praise. Agbada can throw somewhere and the man is on another side dancing. This is how David danced. When David was dancing, he got to a point. His Agbada threw up like this and the wife said, ah! Decorum! This king, you don't have any decency. Look at all the maids in the palace. Look at your bum bum as you are praising God. And he said to the daughter, he said, you want to hear something? He said, this is how I was praising God. Before God chose me in place of your decorum father. Your father is a king. He behaved too. Thank you very much for that English. It, 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 he is too touch for God. When they are praising God, your father check his, his Mary Kay. Oh, I don't want my powder to, you know, my oreke must remain there. It cost me a lot of money before this service to do this powder. I like to do a photo session after the service. Oh, Benny, praise the God. Praise your God this afternoon. Lose the Mary Kay and, and praise your God. Is somebody ready today? Are you really, really, really sure? Jump on your feet if you are ready to press go. Jump on your feet if you are ready to press go. Jump on your feet. Hallelujah. Now, this praise is for only those who know him. If you don't know him, the praise will be a noise. I want this praise to attract maximum result from heaven. So if you are here, I want all eyes closed right now. All eyes closed right now. And all head bow. If you are here, you don't know Jesus. This is the moment you have been waiting for. This is the right time to give your life to Jesus. Please lift up your hand. Let me pray for you. Then you know him intimately. Serve him. Let Jesus become Lord over your life. Lift that hand above your head. I'm going to pray for you right now. Now that you have decided to give your life to Christ, I would like you to say after me, Father, in the name of Jesus, have mercy on me. Wash me by your blood. Make me whole. I confess Jesus, Lord over my life. No more to sin, no more to the devil. Thank you, Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name. Congratulations. You have now joined the family of God. The host of heaven is celebrating and rejoicing with your decision to make Jesus Christ your Lord and personal Savior. We would like to hear your testimony. Know more about you. Pray for you and reach out to you. Please share your details with us in the comment section of this broadcast. 
You can private chat us on Facebook and WhatsApp using the details below. And our online team will be waiting to engage with you immediately. Alternatively, you can type the displayed link and fill your details or send us an email at salvation at islandchurch.com.ng and our team will also reach out to you. God bless you. Now, let's continue with the service.
can be your hater. He can be a hunter chief. He can be your chair. Are you still for this one? Uh?
and praise him in your own way. Every Thanksgiving, you must learn how to say something. Syrian ready to die was my father. It's your grace and your hand that brought me to where I am today. I refuse to take the glory to myself. I join Islanders this afternoon to say thank you. Lord, it is not by our power. It's not by our intellect. It's not even our years of experience that brought us here. It's just your grace. Your marvelous acts. Your marvelous works. Your tender kindness. Your loving kindness. We find grace. Thank you, Jesus. We find love. Your grace, your grace. In your sight. Your grace has found us. Just as we have. Thank you for your grace. We are alive today by your grace. Thank you, Lord. 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 You're the man. You forgive all our iniquities. Majesty, majesty. You rescue our life from destruction. Forever. Thank I you. am changed by your love. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you, Jesus. You satisfy our mouth Majesty. with good things. Our youth is renewed. Lord, we thank you. Father, I join the host of Islanders this morning to say thank you. All of us, we have come with a heart of gratitude. We have come with appreciation. Thank you. For this church, we say thank you for family represented here. We say thank you. You call us to praise you specially today. Lord, we say thank you. We have done according to your instruction. And Lord, let the blessing follow. For everyone who praise you from their heart today, according to Psalm 67, 5 to 7, let those people with the sharpest amen, Lord, raise them. Amen. Everyone saying amen across the nations of the world. Let there be a turnaround for them. Amen. Father, for everyone saying amen right now, change their story. Every barren saying amen, receive your children. Let the hopeless right now receive hope. One of the oriki of God in Yoruba is Opabida Sobidire. The God that turned evil to good, that changed the forgotten, that promote them. 
that promote the beggar and set them among the priests and send them among the kings. Every member of this commission be raised right now. The God that turned my life around, turned your destiny around. Let your amen be deep rooted. Change your story. Move you forward. Connect you with greatness. Somebody is saying amen. You will no longer be stranded. You will no longer see shame. The work of your hand is blessed. Your going out is blessed. Your coming in is blessed. Everything you lay your hand upon from now shall prosper. Those of you going for interview, writing, examination, I decree today no more failure. This new week that started today, you will have something to show. God will give you testimony above your age. He will give you things above your qualifications. That thing this week that you will say, this can only be God. Now, receive your portion. All your expectation for 2022, this month of May, God will surpass them. I see many of you returning this month and say all the things I listed for 2022, by this May, everything has been done in the name of Jesus. Many of you saying amen today, you are not going home sick. Every sickness, as I speak the word right now, they are gone. That pain disappear now. I cause the root of that sickness. Whatever make you weak and dizzy. Right now, the root of that sickness is declared cause in the name of Jesus. As you say, Amen, receive strength. Receive empowerment in the name of Jesus. This week, major testimony. Turn around testimony in the name of Jesus. Now you rise on your feet and shout the loudest hallelujah. The loudest hallelujah. The loudest hallelujah. The loudest hallelujah.